right, you ready to roll? Yep. Boy, I'm sure glad that we are still able to pick up compost where we pick up compost at. Uh, a number of businesses are essential for just keeping society going. And uh, we could still grow without compost, but it, it does make things a lot more difficult. So uh, we're getting ready to go pick up a load of compost here in this dump truck since not for sure how long they will stay open, but I need to get a bunch. So we borrow this truck from my father-in-law who generously let us borrow his, his, uh, his uh, work truck so uh, we can get a lot of compost. So Autobots, transform, roll out. <laughs> Typically, at this time of day, this is the morning hours right before people go to work, the highways has a lot more traffic on it than this. And just driving and seeing how bare the highway is, it's, it's pretty disturbing. Um, I'm not a huge reader, but uh, it does remind me of a prophecy in the Bible that talks about a time when the highways would be desolate. So, um, seeing this is definitely not a blessing for this to happen. I always think and believe that it's a great idea for people to quarantine when they're sick or when they've been around other people who are sick way before the virus has been around the flu or colds or whatever in the past when you're sick and you don't want to spread it to others. However, um, I am bothered by what I feel like we're being conditioned to accept, especially terms like lockdown. That so makes me cringe to my soul. It's like, we're, we're not prisoners, are we? So uh, I can't stand it. Another thing is we should keep our eyes on what is going on around the main thing, the virus and all that. Keep our eyes on what's going on around it. Just like driving here, we, we're keeping our eyes forward on the road and what, where we're going and the direction we're going. But there's so many different things that are happening around us, beside us, behind us, that can affect us that we also need to pay attention to. Um, I just want to just wanna let everybody know about that. Just keep that in mind. And I say these things not to make anybody fearful because I do not, that's the last thing I want to do is to, to add to more of the fear around it, all of this because uh, we should not be, in, we should not be a fearful people. It's the last thing we should do. All right, changing gears. We're almost there. We're almost at the uh, Soul Supply Center where we get some of our organic compost and uh, load it up. All the bed in the herd. Pretty busy in there. That's glad to see that. So uh, I guess a lot of people are starting gardens, and uh, some of the essential construction workers are still going. So that's good to see. All right, we got a pretty big pile here. So uh, we we'll need the carpet to cover it up to keep us from hopefully losing it as we drive. Oh, it's a It sure is, and those flowers are edible too. So if you see those growing around your place, try them, they're pretty yummy. All right, so we have all four corners and 
one on each side held down with our tarp. I think we should be good for the most part. And uh, ready to go. Mama, whenever me and Daddy were um, picking up that dirt, yeah. there was barely any people on the road. <laughs> well, I bet not. They're all supposed to be at home. All the non-essential people. Thank you for your help. As we were out, and I just can't help but think, just seeing how few people were on the road and few people were out, it made me think about all the essential people that were out and need to be out and yeah. really need to keep going for society to be able to survive. So I hadn't really thought about it exactly like that before. There are people like us, like farmers who are there, soil supplies, and people who are doing construction, but also seeing uh, the garbage trucks out. Yeah. Garbage has to be taken out and taken to places because places would be pretty nasty if we didn't have and if, and garbage. And if you really think about it, and I don't want to say anybody is non-essential because every person is an essential person. Yeah. But for society to run, there are things that have to be done for our way of life as we know it. Exactly right. And it just goes to show you, like this younger generation needs to be looking to those jobs that are essential for the future as well yeah and it's a lot of trade jobs that people sometimes look down on but those are the really essential jobs yeah those are the ones that build society and keep society going yeah. uh, and it's made me think about that even more even thinking of some of the places as we were driving through town seeing the places that weren't open like salons and fitness centers i used to be a personal trainer and in the fitness industry that is not an essential job. No, and I don't it's, want to I'm say not any salons or not, but no. it's, it's, it's... That doesn't mean it's not an important thing, yes. in, in, but it's not essential and it's not vital. Those aren't vital jobs for people to survive. So please, I don't want to offend any of you uh, people who work in salons and uh, stylists and, and other personal trainers out there, but our jobs are more expendable that, uh, that the farmers, the the doctors, the, the there is a lot of things that hold our society together, and without them working, uh, a lot of things would crumble. Yep. So, but one of the things that I did like seeing, as I, and uh, there's a lot that I don't like about what's going on right now, but what I do like about what's going on is I see a lot more people connected together as families. Yeah. 
I seen fathers out there walking with their kids, which you don't see a lot of, and and a lot of people were getting exercise in running through the city that you don't see a lot of, especially yeah. at this time of day. So that that's pretty neat to see. Oh, well, and for us, it hasn't been a huge adjustment because because we adjustment because we just went under you know shelter in place yesterday evening, but even through just staying at home it hasn't been a huge change for us because this is what we normally do we only go out for essential things <laughs> normally so i know it's a huge difference for a lot of people but you know you really find out what's essential for your life and what isn't yeah i think it's uh, forced us all to kind of stop and and think more hopefully it has and uh Take time to uh, also grow as a person, yeah. uh, be a well-rounded person. I, list, I like to listen to a lot of podcasts and uh, trying to read more, but uh, I want to be a, a well-rounded person, and there's a number of podcasts that I like. Um, but let me know in the comment section below, uh, do you listen to podcasts, and which ones do you find to be helpful to help you in, in your growth? And what have you been thinking about? What are some major, you know, just thinking points that this whole situation that has put us in what are you thinking right now that you may not have been thinking of three or four weeks ago you mentioned shelter in place earlier i like that much better than lockdown i hate the word lockdown <laughs> i'm not a prisoner <laughs> Well, tomorrow we're gonna to put our compost that we just got to use with transplanting tomatoes and some other things in uh, garden preparation. But uh, we're gonna continue on out here. Had to do some lawn work earlier. But uh, back out here to our permaculture orchard that we're trying to start. And uh, with our fruit trees. And uh, right now we're planting some comfrey. Comfrey is uh, a really good beneficial plant with him a permaculture system all right thank you for putting that there you want, you want to divide it split it up yeah I mean it divides really well it survives pretty much anything so we're gonna split this one so we have more to put in the system sounds good you know what we were talking earlier just about essential jobs and things and, and uh, people not being able to work. One of the things I've been wondering and thinking about is I wonder what will be a higher percentage of after all this. Will it be a higher percentage of divorce or will it be a higher percentage of pregnancies? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. That's two like very different ends of the spectrum and what it feels like. So I don't know. It sure is. I love kids, so I'm hoping the pregnancies will be up, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> Not our pregnancies. <laughs> Not that we know of, right? <laughs> I can assure you right now, that's a big no. We'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> there you go. And that is how you split comfrey. That's about all it takes right there. Each individual little root, if you were to split just this off, this would start a whole other plant. This would start a whole other plant. It just, it spreads really easy. And how would we know that? Because all the comfrey we have here on our homestead came from one little pot of comfrey someone gave me that I thought I had killed whenever it froze solid. But I just dumped the dirt out thinking that there was, I had killed it. And then the next spring, where I dumped that soil, here comes comfrey back. So it's almost indestructible. So thank you to Miss Gladys. I don't know if you'll ever watch this video, but if you do, thank you because the comfrey you gave us is continuing to produce. And it's been what? Seven years maybe? Six? No, six? it's been 10 years. About so longer than that? Whoa. I think I was pregnant with Sayla whenever she gave it to us and 
you don't know how much I've given away as well. I yeah. Mean, like, there's multiple homesteads that I know of that have benefited from this comfrey. So the comfrey, the plant that continues to give and give and give and, and give. give and give. <laughs> So I, I was partly joking about the comment earlier about the divorce rates, but partly because I do think that divorce will rise to a degree, to whatever percentage, uh, with people having to spend a lot more time together. And uh, that's a change for a lot of people because uh, we live our lives, we're, when we're working, we're spending eight to 12 to 14 hours apart for each other, from each other, and then we then we uh, only have what two to four hours maybe five at the most that we spend together and a lot of issues can just kind of be brushed to the side but when you spend a lot the bulk of your day together it definitely forces you to work through issues and uh, with us homesteading past six years especially the past two years where I've really been on the homestead almost pretty much full time uh, it's definitely something we had to learn it's like uh, we're still learning yeah, still learning but um it, it, it kind of brings those things to light. I think about people who, who are retired and they spend their time together now that they didn't have to do before. They, it, it forces you to, uh, to learn to work together more and uh, to learn more about each other. What do you think? I, it's so true. And you still get, we've been doing this how many every years now, and we still get frustrated with one another. Yeah. We don't always put that on camera, but it still happens. We get frustrated with one another and we're still learning and growing and everybody's changing. So you all are, you're all the time having to make adjustments for one another and for yourself and for your children and for your circumstances. It's like we're all, you, you just have to keep on growing together but so I, you don't grow apart. But I think spending more time together forces you to really know each other more for yeah. the good and for the bad. Both, yes. Because we can hide ourselves a lot of time and, and, uh, and for the bulk of the day and be people almost almost two different personalities that we come yeah. home to yeah. but when you're spending hour upon hour upon day upon day with each other you you really get to see a lot of both sides of everybody yeah not so, much uh, hides it's pretty it's pretty interesting but uh i wouldn't trade it i think it is very very beneficial and uh can help you grow closer and know each other even more so with planning the comfrey here uh, comfrey has a lot of nutrients in it and uh, one of the things that comfrey is good for is you can just chop it and drop it and it'll provide a lot of nitrogen uh, a lot of just good nutrients to your fruit trees on top of being a good mulch so uh, that's what we're gonna do with these comfrey plants that we're planting here and uh, also we received a comment about why we are considering planting and planning to plant locust trees well in between our fruit trees the reason why is as we learn from the permaculture orchard uh, series is uh, because the locust trees are nitrogen fixers which means they're going to bring more nitrogen to the surface for your fruit trees to be able to absorb so that way they produce fruit so uh, within the permaculture system everything uh, works together in unison for the benefit so you're not av having to add all these artificial chemicals and all these things to it you can just let the system work together for itself and with comfrey being such a great plant for your homestead, um, if you want to buy any comfrey, our friends John and Angela over at Heirloom Permaculture, they have a YouTube channel. Uh, they sell comfrey and they will, I'm pretty sure they will ship it to you. So if you need some, you can contact them and I will leave the information in the show notes below. And also we want to uh, remind you about Stark Brothers that we have a promotion going on with them. Now through the end of June, you get 10% off an order of $50 more with the code FITFARMER. But I also saw on Facebook today that they're running a really good sale on their berry bushes and berry plants. So you want to check that out too. Well, we're going to get back to work here. See you next time.
Well, friends, we live in an interesting time right now. And I do want to mention that the media is a business, a group of businesses that make their money from views and they get a lot of their views from marketing fear. Yet fear is no way to live our lives. I don't buy into a lot of the fear that they're selling. They're selling panic and uh, watch out for the peel that they may sell. So um, agree with me or not, I think that fear is no way to live your life. But the reality of the matter is that many of us are spending much more time with our spouses, with our children, with our family, those in our household, than we may have possibly ever have before outside of a vacation or something. So uh, this may bring up new challenges or may cause old challenges to resurface and that we're going to have to work through. So I encourage you, encourage me, encourage us all to take this time, this negative, to turn this negative situation into a positive. Use this time to grow closer to your loved ones, to examine yourself, to examine what your purpose is and the direction that you want to go in life. I have found some, uh, some resources, some podcasts, and a number of other things that have helped me and continue to help me in these areas, and I plan to share those with those of you who are signed up on my email, email newsletter. So if you haven't already, check the show notes below and I'll share it with you. That's it for now. See you next time.